Black Death was a severe pandemic causing mass sicknesses and destruction. Yet, it also helped driving crucial social and scientific progresses. Let's find out what the Black Death is and how it affects the development of Europe over the following hundred years. Thus, investigate what we can learn from it. Black Death, also known as Plague, was one of the most fatal pandemics of history. According to the World Health Organization report, it was estimated that about 15 million people died. There have been several outbreaks of the Black Death in history, and in this video, we will be focusing on the Black Death that happened between 1347 and 1353 in Europe, consequently explaining its impact to Europe in the Middle Ages. So, where did the disease come from? It is believed that it originated in East or Central Asia and may have reached Crimea in 3047 through the Maritime Silk Road. Later on, Genoese traders carried the Black Death to Sicily, Italy, and from there on, it spread it rapidly in the rest of Europe. The first major outbreak was recorded in Constantinople. The carriers of the virus were later found to be fleas and other parasites that were attaching themselves onto black rats. Yersinia pestis was the scientific name of this infection. A person may get the plague via the bite of an infected flea or rat. Once the pathogen enters the lung, it can transmit from person to person through droplet infection. Patients would first deliver fever, followed by swelling of the neck, armpit and other lymph nodes. Coughing and eventually black spots begin to appear under the skin. Necrosis of hands and feet and finally a large amount of necrosis of body organs leading to death. It is estimated that Black Death reduced the European population by 30 to 60 percent during the 14th century, and it took at least 200 years for European population to return to its previous level. Some of the most critical factors that have made Europe a hotbed for the bacteria were poor hygiene, lack of medical knowledge, inadequate prevention measures, and misconception of the disease. In the Middle Ages of Europe, the public hygiene level and awareness are unsatisfactory. The carry of pathogens, black rats and fleas could be found everywhere. Due to the lack of scientific and medical development, no plague doctors were able to find a cure or ways to alleviate symptoms. For patients who have grown tumours on the side of their necks, plague doctors would help drain the pus from the tumours, albeit due to the lack of hygiene it led to infections and other complications. A common misconception regarding the disease was that people believed that the cause of the illness was the bad air surrounding. Plague doctors therefore advised not to breathe in the air by burning aromatic wood such as musk, ember and rosemary. Another misconception was that people overestimated the role of priests during the Black Death. Back in the days, priests were thought to be rescuers for the Black Death. However, their way of treatment is nothing but baptizing and praying. The spread of disease within the religious community therefore left many priests killed and later on surviving priests would refuse to see patients. There was no rational explanation for the pandemic and some religious scholars claimed that the plague was a martyrdom and mercy from God to punish those non-believers. Some upper class men therefore joined processions of flagellants that travelled from town to town and engaged in public displays of penance and punishments. They believed that this would win God's forgiveness, hence cure the Black Death. They would beat themselves and one another with heavy leather straps studded with sharp pieces of metal. Some other people believed that the way to do this was to purge their communities of heretics and other troublemakers. For example, many thousands of Jaws were massacred in 3048 and 3049. They were rumoured to poison the water, and since the Jewish community had less death, the Catholics gave it a push by burning them alive. In Strasbourg, Germany, there were over 200 Jewish burned alive in one day. The above fusty behaviours did not help to contain the spread of the disease. Many people thought that the Black Death has brought only negative impacts. This is particularly true when we are merely considering the immediate consequences. However, the Black Death did bring some vital development to the European society in a long-term perspective. The Black Death led to massive decline in population and reduced the labour force by 25%. The low number of harvests spiked the prices and life was so much harder on commoners. European cities became an alloy of hospitals and crematories. Most shops were closed, many countries restricted and even banned trade. Europe was in deep recession. The Black Death also led to some positive changes to European economic structure. As the labour force dwindled and price of labour rose, 
farmers began to invest in improving agricultural tools. Some of them also started to invest pastures to breed sheep, which give a boost to the wool industry. Also, the survivors had a new understanding of the value of life and began to pursue handinism. The demands for handmade goods and luxury goods increased, and so had the prices. The manual manufacturing industry developed rapidly. Wealth was thus transferred from different regions to the cities, leading to urban revitalization. What about the medical system and education? Doctors at the time used many fusty and laggard methods, such as bloodletting, which exposed the medical defects at the time. People began to realize the importance of healthcare and education. The Black Death promoted the development of surgery and anatomy, and many leaders and scholars carried out a series of studies. For example, Guy de Chaliac, a physician to the King of France, wrote a book called the Chirurgy, which laid the foundation for surgery. By observing the anatomy of the Black Death patients, also there was great increase in university institutions, such as the University of Cambridge, which created several new faculties in 1348. The development of university promoted the enlightenment of science and weakened people's confidence in theology. In the early stages, people relied heavily on religion, but as the death toll rose, it became clear that religious movements, such as flagellations, did not save them from the disaster. The status of religion began to waver in people's mind. People began to think about the importance of individualism in the face of powerful church. This kind of questioning gradually developed into hatred and revolt of the social inequality. The Black Death has brought with it reflection on human and destabilization of religious belief. These became one of the motivating factors for the Renaissance, providing the base for the unprecedented liberation. In particular, the negative impacts of the Black Death promoted the emergence of large number of realistic literary works. For example, Giovanni Boccaccio wrote a book, De Cameron, between 1350 and 1353, telling the story of the plague in 1348. He criticized the Catholic Church for spreading darkness and evil, and revealed the corruption of the feudal aristocracy. These critical works promoted the development of humanism. The Black Death was also foreshadowing the Reformation. At the time, people wanted to break free from autocracy and oppression of Catholicism, and oppose the traditional dogma of it. The shifting position of the church emerges as far back as the Black Death. The great pain and fear of the disaster struck the spiritual life of the people, depriving the church of its spiritual authority and support. Confidence in the power of the shrines and talismans that had brought comfort for decades was shattered. Not only was the Christian orthodoxy questioned, but there was corruption within the hierarchy of the church. The church was politically powerful in the early Middle Ages, but the Black Death, which killed a large number of clergymen, changed the balance of power between the church and the crown. This greatly shook the faith in the church to its core. The emergence of the Renaissance, the liberation of people's mind, the progress of science and culture, as well as the increasing corruption of the church, were all the signs for religious reformation. These events that brought Europe out of the disaster shadowed and promoted the development of medieval Europe into modern society. Although the Black Death took a heavy toll on Europe at the time, it was the dark hour before dawn in the whole evolution of European history. After the Black Death, European society began to emancipate ideologically. Many realized the value of existence and started pursuing equality and freedom, promoting humanism and advocating human autonomy. Speaking of pandemic, one cannot overlook the modern-day crisis, COVID-19. As of 16th of April, there are over two million confirmed cases globally. There are quarantine lockdowns in almost every country on the planet. A safe news for us is that the latest COVID-19 outbreaks seems to have a lower fatality rate than the Black Death. Of all the confirmed cases of COVID-19, 130,000 people have died, which is luckily far less than the 50 million people from the Black Death. This is largely due to the improved hygiene, better health awareness, and effective communication between countries. Nonetheless, this COVID-19 is not something we can disdain. Generated from the fear unknown, just like what had happened to the Jewish community in the 14th century, Asians around the world became the target of xenophobic attacks. As a nation who was in Italy at the time, I was shunned by many banks because of my complexion. 
There are many more incidents of xenophobic attacks arisen from this situation, and although I was terribly upset by these situations, it is also undeniable that these actions were driven by fear. From what we have learnt from the Black Death, our species will continue to face the old and new disease in the foreseeable future, and conditions at the time of Black Death are still possible today. Increasing globalization connects far-flung human populations, making disease that occur anywhere on the globe relevant to us all. However, we also know that when in crisis, humans do show plenty of love and support for each other, and that, although it might seem impossible, we will be able to get through it, just like the people from the 14th century getting through the Black Death. Therefore, it is to hope that in this desperate time, we can refrain ourselves to interpret disease within a moral framework. The indistinctive desire to scapegoat will inevitably create an epidemic of misinformation that is more deadly than the virus itself. As coronavirus continues to spread, lessons from the past remain an important tool for preventing further races and xenophobic attacks. Nonetheless, we are all hopeful in the kindness of human nature and will be big advocates of social distancing and personal hygiene. May this pandemic pass soon.